Well, praise the Lord. We are here again, and we are ready to answer your questions and talk about everything that's going on right now all over the world here in America, everything that uh, God has been showing us and speaking to us. And uh, we're looking forward to a great time today. Praise the Lord. Joining me, as always, is Brother Randy Johns and our pastor and prophet, Brother Don Evans. Good evening. Hi, how's everybody doing? We're excited about what's going on throughout the whole world. And we're glad that you're asking because we do have the answers for you. What do we want to start with, David? Anything well, we'll special? We'll jump, jump right into our questions and, and uh, we do have a lot of things to, to talk about and just tell about what God is doing for us here and how we're seeing Him move. Uh, but we're going to get right into the questions, and uh, we'll get back to some of that other stuff later. Praise the Lord. Reverend Fox from South Africa says, With all that is happening right now, um, I sure wish it was time for a talk with the prophet that he left his question earlier in the month. Um, his question was, Why do these people who think they are prophets still live in chapter 9? If they would wake up, they would clearly see the church is going to go out before 2018. Am I right? Thank you. Well, you're very, very close if you're not right. <laughs> we might not even get to 2018. I know some people are saying we are, but uh, I'll tell you from what we're seeing and what we see in our Bible and what we understand, the time is very, very short. So the best thing you could do is make sure your house is in order. Make sure you're ready to go. Hmm. Amen about that. Very true. In fact, that's one thing the Lord had spoke to us about a while ago. Um, set your house in order. And uh, remember, He's going to judge His people before He judges the world, in a sense. And we're going to get taken out of here, and then His wrath is going to get poured out. So that's if we're right. ready, we don't have anything to worry about. We don't have to be concerned about what's going on all around us. Because I believe, and we all believe, that it's not going to affect us if we're trusting in God and if we've done everything that He's told us to do and we've given everything over to Him. He's going to take us through these days victoriously, just like He promised. Amen? Amen. 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 And we need to remember that not every prophet's a prophet. That's right. God said that the last days are going to be false prophets. And remember in 2 Kings what happened with Ahab. A lying spirit entered into the mouths of his prophets and lied to them. That's and right. And got him killed. Yeah, we forget some of those things. Glory. All right, David, another one? Yep, praise the Lord. That is very clear. Uh, Reverend Kim from Japan says, We keep hearing these novices and false prophets warning, about, warning people about Yellowstone National Park <laughs> erupting and all these signs going on. What oh. is the truth? Why are so many prophetic teachers now going all the way through the seven years? <clears throat> I don't know, but it sure sounds like they were ones that claimed that they believed we went out the last trumpet. Now the things that they're teaching, if they really look at what they're saying, they're saying we're going all the way through. Well, if you check on the scientists, I mean, they're one, the ones that's supposed to know all about it. They say Yellowstone National Park will never, now get that word, never erupt as long as the uh, uh, geishers, the old faithful, all that is spewing out because that lets off all the gas. And they say there's not enough gas there to give a big fart. So quit worrying about Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> That's right. Everything will be fine. It's like your car. As long as you don't have something stuffed in your exhaust where it can breathe, you're going to be all right. That's right. In, in fact, didn't you have a relative in that area yes, we do. that told you <laughs> that all the lies that they were saying about how the animals and everything were leaving was totally, absolutely false? My <laughs> wife's uh, best friend's sister, they own a big ranch right there. They see the, all the animals when they come down. It's normal every year. They haven't felt no shaking there. They haven't felt no rumblings there. No piece of land is sunk down. None of the things that you're hearing from these talk shows on television 
are taking place. Now that's somebody that lives right there at Yellowstone. Matter of fact, he walks off his property, he's on their property. Hmm. It's no different with what the news people try to do with weather events. That's right. They'll take, oh, this is the coldest air, you're going to die if you go outside for 10 minutes, your face will freeze off. <laughs> well, how long has it been since we've had that same temperatures last year and everybody's still around? Unless you get stranded outside or something. I was sitting in the foot doctor's office yesterday getting my toenails cut. And he was telling me how cold it's going to be this weekend. I said, well, that's not too bad. And he said, what? I said, well, I lived in Wisconsin for 15 years. I said, I seen 62 below zero without a wind chill. They said, oh, how are you getting well outdoors? I said, well, we went outdoors. He said, no, your eyeballs would freeze. The water in your eyeballs, they'd break and shatter. And I wanted to tell him, but I want to be nice to him. I want to say, are my eyeballs still here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the things that people come up with that are untrue. <laughs> very true, very true. You know, and that was another thing the Lord told us about uh, on the New Year's Eve service about how crazy and off the weather was going to be. Yep. And it sure has been backwards. It's, we've had it in the 50s here in February in yep. New York. That is very uncommon. <clears throat> now we got, got our first snow, really. Yep. We just got it. <laughs> it's is cold today and it's supposed to be cold tomorrow. But And here's the funny it's thing. It's February, almost over. <laughs> We're going to be at a high of zero tomorrow, they say, and then below zero, like 33 degrees with the wind chill, they say. And then come Monday to Tuesday, we're supposed to have a threat of rain. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you. But the global warming end of it seems to be true. That does, because I grew up here as a kid, and I'll tell you, I've seen snow to the top of the telephone poles. Many times, many, I saw 32 below zero here, which was cold, but it was in February that the 32 below zero was. In fact, they were talking a lot last month about the storm of 66, and I saw some <laughs> pictures from that. I think the snow was about eight feet tall. <clears throat> that was something. It sure was. 72 inches of snow. It started on a Friday night. We had absolutely no snow on the ground. It was an open winter because uh, everybody is worried about open, you know, green cemeteries means full graveyards. <laughs> I mean, all these stupid sayings, you know. And it started snowing, and when it stopped snowing around noon on Sunday, we had 72 inches of snow on the ground or more. Well, good. It sounds a lot like this winter. <laughs> When's it coming? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, this one uh, says, a uh, sign from the truth. He says, is Trump a sign from God? <laughs> Please, Mr. Prophet, explain for us. Also, how can um, TC say he is a Christian and lie? We know his father says he is a Christian, so he says, but he hated America and lived in Canada before coming here. <clears throat> well, I've heard that. I heard that he was... You know, because he was Cuban descent. Now, I only heard, I heard that he went to Canada because he hated America because he was Cuban background. And uh, he's supposed to be a Southern Baptist minister, I think. I don't know for sure on that either. But for a Christian, he sure lies and he cheats. What he'd done to Ben Carlson was not right. A Christian would have never done that, so I have no no idea. And uh, I know they're saying, "Well, God's give us a sign, the last Trump, because there won't probably won't be another Trump running." But whether that's true or not, I don't know. God hasn't told us that. <laughs> he would make a good president, so I I don't know. They're fighting them both. I think God <laughs> just added it just as a laugh. <coughs> <laughs> Trump's running for president. Time of the last Trump. About ready to sound. Amen? No. We don't get moved by... If it's not in the Bible, we don't get moved. That's right. We just think <laughs> it's right. funny. Uh, yes, that is very true. 
Uh, Reverend Ben from Turkey says, Mr. Prophet, isn't many of the things that so-called prophets are saying um, taking place after the church is taken out and not before? Now that's very true. For some reason, they have a hard time telling when the church is taken out and when the church is not taken out. They, they don't seem to know, even though I believe we go at the last trumpet, you know that, we've taught you that. Uh, when they see the Lord coming on a white horse and all the people with him, and he's coming to make peace, they say that's the rapture of the church. No, it is not. I mean, the Bible is very clear. The rapture of the church is when the Lord meets us in the clouds. They don't see him. Only the church in the clouds. Yep. And we're gone. We're gone for three and a half years. At the end of three and a half years, we come back riding on white horses, and every eye shall see us when we're coming. But that's way down when he's coming to make peace and set up his thousand year millennial reign. Amen. If you get that straight, they won't confuse you. What else did he ask? Henry? Um, he asked, no, that's all he asked about. Either way, we need to be ready now. That's right. Whether right. it's Amen. later or tomorrow or right Amen. now. If you're not ready, that's not, that's not God's fault. You know, but it is very true. We've seen a lot of people get confused on that versus the rapture of the church versus the second coming when they see Christ. Um, you know, and it's like Pastor said, that's, you know, if you can understand that, you can understand and see where all these different things um, take place. But remember, God clearly says, I will not pour out my wrath upon my people. That's right. And even before, even once you, um, before you get to the three woes in the book of Revelation at the fifth trumpet, he sends out his angels to mark his people so that nothing could um, happen to them. Could, could happen yep. to them. Yep. yep. Yeah, and the white, all the four horses have been riding. The fifth horse is the one you should be looking for. Well, I hope you're, you're going to heaven. But the fifth horse is Jesus coming Amen. back. You know, to set up his thousand millennial year millennial reign. Well, the horses have been riding for quite a while. That's right. Yeah, I don't know why they're not seeing that. Some are just starting to see it. And, oh, we're on the first horse. No, that was the falling away. That yeah. took place in the first part of 2000. We begin to see the falling away. And we're still seeing the falling away. It hasn't changed. We're seeing the attack on the Christians. Where does that take place in the book of Revelation? I mean, we, we can talk about America right there. We're seeing it here in America. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And Revelation is very clear on that. And that's way, way past the 7th and 8th chapter. Hello, folks. Well, things are happening. But it's no, I guess nobody's ever told you the truth on the book of Revelation. I mean, somebody wrote, well, I don't know which one of my books of Revelation is the best one. <laughs> well, it depends how oh. deep you want to go into it. If you oh. just want to know what's happening on the book of Revelation, take the shortest study. I mean, if you're really a scholar and you want to d dig into it, take the longest. Because you know what? They're both at the same price, $5 each. Better yet, read both of them. Yeah, read all three. <laughs> or all three of them. <laughs> and then read Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, I got two studies on Daniel, I think. Maybe three. Especially chapter 11, and you'll clearly see who the Antichrist is. That's right. And then better yet, actually read the Bible. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the next question? Uh, Wolf from South Africa says, Can you talk a little bit about the revival going on in your church? that people are talking about all over South Africa. Is this the one God said would come from the Northland in the last days? Yes, it is. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yeah, we're having a tremendous, tremendous revival here in our church. Uh, we never know if we're going to get to preach 
anymore in the morning service. <laughs> <laughs> we get it in sometimes. And, uh, but what has it been? Four straight weeks now. Four this will be our fifth we, week. Yep. We're seeing miracles. We're seeing healings. We're seeing all kind of things, and God's talking to us. He told us that we would see that. He said the greatest revival the world has ever seen <clears throat> would start right here, yeah, right man. in the center of New York State. And if you go down to the Cortland County Fairground, you'll see a marker right there that says this is the center of New York State. We're right, we're right there. We don't, we're not on the... We're out of ways from there, but we're right here. Amen. You know, when we first come, I believe that was 20 years ago. 25. Much. About there. Yeah, he's, but anyways, uh, it didn't take us long to fill the church to overflowing. And God had uh, said that he was going to expand the airport on this side of town. Then he was going to build a motel on this side of town. And we lost probably a third of our people over that prophecy. Because every single one of them said they'll never expand the airport. That's as big as this airport is ever going to get. And they'll never, never under any circumstances build a motel on this side of town. <laughs> well, they expanded the airport. Amen. They not only built one motel, but they built two motels on this side of town. Yep. I mean, the word was fulfilled right to the T. You would think that would cause them to come back, but it didn't. <laughs> well, I think God hardened their hearts. <laughs> oh, I tell you, sometimes we get a chuckle out of it. Well, we even had one guy write to us one time. Uh, who was a good friend of ours, and tell us that he knew that he was wrong and he saw everything that God did. That's right. But he still isn't here. Nope. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, my stove is wearing out, my kitchen stove, so we got our anniversary coming up on the 25th. My wife, our, our 60th anniversary, so I bought her a new stove. And a They've got all this, uh, if, if Americans haven't woke up, I haven't told him my name, I haven't given him my credit card or nothing. I'm just talking to him. I said, all right, are you ready for this information? And he says, uh, you're Pastor Don Evans, right? I said, yes. He said, is this so for the church or for your house? I said, no, 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 this is mine personally. I have to pay tax on it, thank you. Uh, and it was one of the boys, his mom and dad, used to go to our church, the Warrens. Oh. His dad was being greatly used. But we had a tent service, and we invited this real famous man, and we had to stop the program because he got off into the faults. <laughs> and we lost half of the church that time because they thought we were wrong, but... I think they've seen over the years since then, we were 100% right. Yeah, we true. weren't wrong. True. <laughs> uh, but it was I, funny. <laughs> I think God used that to show that those people really weren't with you in that sense. If they're going to leave. Well, they have never been like learned. That. Nobody taught them. You see, there's so many things we've never been taught. And even though we've been here and, and we try like mad, matter of fact, right now, Almost every Sunday, I'm giving away free studies, Amen. many books to the, to the people because there's so much they need to know That's right. in order to be victorious during these last days. That's why we got all of our notes marked down to $5. I mean, there's some books out there. He wanted, this guy wanted the book of Isaiah. I thought to myself, I sure hope he's a reader because <laughs> I think there's over 500 pages in in the study of Isaiah. I mean, that's quite a book. Amen. <laughs> but if you're hungry, they're there for you. That's right. Amen. Ask Randy. He, he reads them all the while. <laughs> I don't remember all the ones that you've sent me, but I, whatever ones you've sent me. <laughs> you read it. <laughs> uh. You will not be disappointed, that's for sure. We hear from people all over um, the Internet. And uh, for a gift of $5, you can write to Pastor 
and um, he'll send it to you in an attachment, an email, whatever study you want. I think there's only over 500 of them now on the website. Yeah, I think you there's can pick from. 540 or 550, something <clears throat> like that. I think a couple years ago that was at only at 300, so he's up that quite a bit. Yeah, I'm working on them. I mean, I've got one I've got almost done now. I just finished one and sent it to Randy because he also proofreads it and helps me correct it there. I mean, you run it through spell, spell check, but you still still miss things. Well, Some mistakes still spell words, so it doesn't <laughs> pick it up. I mean, we do we do this to help you, and he gives the studies away to help you. We're doing this all to help all of you so that you can be victorious in these days, so that you don't miss out, so that you don't miss the rapture period. Uh, sadly, I think there's a lot of people who call themselves Christians that aren't, and one day they're going to wake up and wonder where, uh, what happened, and it's going to be too late. Amen. <laughs> I was looking for something in my books the other day, and couldn't get scrolled around to where I wanted to go, and David popped in and told me what to do, and we got that up, and, and I come down through, and I said, uh, uh, an interview with Ern Baxter. I thought, what was that about? <laughs> <laughs> so I clicked that on and read that. And he, he's long gone home to be with the Lord. He, he was a great preacher. Oh, man, was he ever. He traveled with William Brannan. Uh, I mean, he was powerfully used. And he remembered when I was up in the Northwest Territories of Canada. And, <laughs> and he said... He was flowing in the, uh, the gift of word of wisdom like I've never seen anybody in my life flow. And I thought, wait a minute, you traveled with William Brannan. <laughs> I mean, thank you for the compliment, but <laughs> I've always yeah. heard he was the world's greatest. <laughs> well, you know, we've been having... A lot of people in church have been flowing in ways that they've never flowed before. Oh, yes. That's another part of this last revival is that God's using those that are open right. to do things that he's never used them to do before. And that's why we've got to be vessels ready to be used. He's birthing us new songs again, too, he said. And Sunday night it was my great-granddaughter. She came, she said... Can I sing a song? We said, no. yeah, no problem. Amen. You know, she's getting where she wants to sing like others are. And, and uh, so at home, she said, you want to hear my song? I said, if you want to sing it. She said, I wrote it myself. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, she sung it Sunday night. Didn't have any music to it. We got people that could have put music to it. But it was a good little song. Good little song for her first song ever. <laughs> I came in after she started singing. I was wondering where the music was. And then I found out that she wrote the song. I was like, well, that was pretty good. Yeah, it was strange. You see, the devil fights us, and people don't recognize. But we've got a piano player, and we've got an organist, and either one of them can write the music to the song that you're singing after you've sung it through at least once. They have no problem without about putting music to it. And nobody nobody offered to for some reason, but that was all right. Well, God will have music for it here soon. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's get back to our questions. All right. Reverend Ben from North Dakota said, just like you told us, the stock market is going down, down. How much longer before it hits the bottom and should everyone get their money out before the money is all gone? Yes. A big yes. <clears throat> Are you watching how far it's dropped? And how much money our government and billionaires have shoved in there to try to support it and keep it up and nothing is working. And uh, they're saying, I mean, where we are right now, it, it could be, you know, March, 
I don't think much past April, the experts out there are saying April. I don't know. Yeah, it's close. And so most naturally, I'd recommend to you to get your money out before there's no money in there to get out. Amen. Now, the last time it collapsed, we told the people to get it out, and I think everybody in our church got it out, and nobody lost any money. My son, I forget where he was then, uh, working on his job, and I told him to get his out, too, and he, he didn't get it out, and he lost about $64,000. But he left it set right in there, and he's gained it all back now. But that was back in 2000. Yeah. He probably would have had a lot more right now if he would have listened. Yep. Because he wouldn't have had to wait for it to build all back up. <laughs> he would have had all that plus what he just got back. <laughs> but you see, that's what happens when you're greedy. You so we know it's going to go going. down. <laughs> Amen. We know it's going to go down. But really, if you look at it, if it's taken almost eight years for people to recover what they lost, think about it again like this. Where are we going to be in eight years? Well, um, I, don't think we're I don't know that we're going to be here that long. And just with everything you see going on, you know, and the Lord spoke to me and told me that people will not get back what they've lost already. That's right. So you might, you would be far better to cut your losses and keep what you have left. Invest it into God's kingdom. Put it where it's safe. Do That's something right. with it. Amen. <clears throat> That's right. Otherwise, one day you're going to wake up and have nothing left. And then God's going to say to you, what'd you do with all that money? <laughs> you buried it. <laughs> it <rotted>. True. <laughs> you want to donate some to us? Go ahead. We're in a building program <laughs> right now. Amen. Amen. You're free to do that. Matter of fact, if you God want interest us. on it, you know, let us know. We might be able to make a deal with you. Amen. At two or three percent interest. God told us the bank was more interest than that. That's right. <laughs> Add more chairs. But I found out right after that service, we went to Children's Church, and my wife said we need more chairs. <laughs> we already had to set up more chairs, and I got looking. I said, "You realize we don't really have much more chairs." <laughs> we we got the tent chairs, but they're not. We need more tent chairs too, yeah. but they're not chairs you use inside. But we could yeah. use them if we had to. <laughs> I'm telling you right now that this house is already gonna, is already overflowing. You might as well say it's overflowing right now because we already are running out of room. Maybe not exactly in the sanctuary yet, but when oh, you go anywhere else. The Christmas program. The Christmas program, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're packed. We were packed. And oh, every we're seat we had was full. You might as well say we're full because you got to pretty much only have a couple seats in between certain people. You can see the service is free, too. Go to our website and go right there and watch the program. Any day of the week because it's still on there. Even though it's not Sunday, it's there. It's just like a talk with the Father. If you can't get to see it on Saturday, I'll jump on Wednesday and go to it and you'll find it right there. The thing I'm concerned about, though, is that we need their building going up because we don't have much room left for many more people to come. We want we want our college, too. We want to Amen. do a few more years of college before the Lord goes. There's some kids that want to go in the ministry, and you realize if you only go one day, you get credit from God for all <coughs> four years. Amen. 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 Come on, Amen. we'd love to see you. We have you know, to put up that camp meeting tent here. We might have to do that. <laughs> you know, we've added on to that twice. We may have to add on to it again. <laughs> oh, glory. Go ahead, David. Praise the Lord. Al Ben James, prophet of the House of Israel, says, Our spies are reporting that is that Russia is building up massive troops, tanks, and fighter planes in Syria. Hundreds of thousands. Is it time for war now? We can see our country getting ready for attacks and they want to close down the Temple Mount. Mr. Prophet, what is God saying to you? Well, today, uh, the man that does all the fulfillment on our fulfillment page, which you can go read, you read that one from the bottom up, 
But anyways, uh, on that, he did read an article coming from somebody about all the military troops and tanks and helicopters and airplanes that Russia has moved to Syria, that they're building up a huge, huge army there. That was on national news. So what, what they're saying from Israel is true. Mm -hmm. It is happening. And that we know the time is very short. Uh, the king of Jordan <laughs> is the one that closed down the mountaintop. And if Israel don't sign that peace treaty, he's not going to let them back up there again. You say, what's Jordan got to do with that? Well, he's the one that's in charge of the mountaintop. Yep. <laughs> he's also the one that we watch very closely. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Very, very true. <clears throat> Something to keep your eyes on. Uh, Stephen from Australia said, Who did God tell people to vote for in the last election, and who is God telling people to vote for in the next election? The last election was not the one that was running for president. It was a little Catholic boy named Santurum. And all at once, people stopped pushing him in the polls, and they let this <laughs> Mormon get ahead. That's the last election, wasn't yeah, it? That was the last election. That's the election. And they wondered why 250,000 Christians didn't vote in it. <laughs> well, Mormonism is a cult. That's right. <laughs> it's not a Christian church. Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christian churches. True. No. <gasps> uh, no God wouldn't is. tell us to vote for one of them. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, I forgot all about that election. I was thinking of back when uh, it was uh, uh, Sarah Palin and, and Sarah Palin uh, and Obama. <laughs> I forgot about the last election. My mind goes right back to 2008 because that's where we <laughs> failed miserably. Yep. <laughs> right there. And God does show us, but people don't always want to listen True. to God. Yeah. And then the Christians, uh, he writes this quite often and he's asking, well, who was he? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, it's like well, Israel, we want a king. All right, well, you can have your king, but you're not going to have the one I wanted for That's you. right. Well, he also asked, uh, cares, uh, Pentecostals were bowing down and kissing the Pope's ring. Yeah. I haven't heard that on television. But listen, <clears throat> most of your churches that are spirit-filled on television are called Pentecostal. But really, they're charismatic. They are not Pentecostal. And if you were calling them Pente Pentecostal, are they the oneness? <laughs> you know, are they real Pentecostals? Uh, you see, you just can't put a label on somebody and try to put us all in the same box yeah. with them. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is a charismatic, 100%. Uh, I know him personally. He's not a Pentecostal. He's a charismatic. And sometimes they believe different than we do. What other question did he have there? Um, the only one that I have here is, is the holy laughter movement a true or oh. false movement? <laughs> well, we had a holy laughter movement before, you remember? Uh... That was back quite a way from, uh, uh, I can think, almost think of his name, but that was a false movement. You say, how do you know it was false? <laughs> well, they couldn't even preach. Yeah. I mean, not that they were giving place to the Holy Spirit to move. I mean, uh, they'd start to preach and some, ah, 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 and drown right out the preaching. It's a laughing spirit. Well, according to the Bible, that's wrong. That's right. Yep. I mean, if somebody's preaching, the anointing is on them, and the Holy Ghost is not going to anoint them. That's right. So it was it was a wrong move, and when they find found that out, it died down. 
back in 19... <coughs> Uh, maybe 1800s, the last of the 1800s in Kentucky or Tennessee, uh, they had the first uh, laughing movement down there, a camp meeting that started out to be one week long and it ended up for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it was also the first time the shaking went on, like we saw in Canada, like we saw in Pensacola, Florida, like moved to Brandon, Missouri, uh, and that was all fake. And when people started shaking so hard, their necks broke, then the pastors got together and said, something's wrong here. Sure. God don't kill people. Yep. This can't be of God. These people have been killed. And then they knew it was the devil. And why would God want to shake you so hard you'd break your neck? I mean, common sense should have told them this is not God, but it didn't. So that's right. The laughing movement interrupts the service. <laughs> and if you look at our services, we mentioned that so that we don't know if we're going to preach or not. There's a totally different atmosphere, atmosphere yeah. than why we don't preach. And God always preaches during that time. We, we've had a laughing <laughs> service before. Yep. Yeah, but it doesn't disrupt. I mean, if the spirit or the gifts of the spirit wants to move, yep. it doesn't interrupt it. Amen. Right. We'd stop it. <laughs> if it did, we'd say, oh, wait a minute here. <laughs> like I said, I threw that man off the platform once <laughs> who, who is still on, got a TV show now. He had a radio show and now he's got a TV show. Yeah. Yep. When God moves, it's always according to His Word. Things that happen are for our good, and they teach us things, and He shows us things, and He heals people. He doesn't just cause people to just do whatever they want to do and try to fake all this stuff. And if you ask anybody that preaches, that we're supposed to preach, they can say, God already preached my sermon. That's right. Because it lines right up. <laughs> Matter of fact, we've never gone on television until now. But we're not on what you could call television. You see, God told us not to go on there and have to spend millions and millions and millions and, and just begging you for money to stay on. I mean, when it come time, we went on Ustream, now we're on Ustream and Facebook and who knows what. And it's all free. It's all free. Amen. We could come on every day of the week for you. We wouldn't have to beg for money from you. Amen. Well, we done it God's way. We were on the radio for 13 years, number one station in the state of Washington, or state of Wisconsin, and never once, never once had to ask or beg for money. Never. Never. Amen. God always took care of it. And I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but... If you've been getting more blessings lately, <laughs> like things that you just know God is just blessing you. Amen. The blessings just keep on oh, coming yes. in. On this stove I told you about for my wife, a thousand dollars was the price on the stove. But it was a 2015. Well, what are we now? 2016. 2016. <laughs> I bought that same stove with a discount for $500. Oh. Amen. I saved a $500 right there. Praise Amen. <laughs> yep. I tell you, God is so good. He took up my battery, went in my car, and David's my mechanic most of the time. He, he took the battery back, and they gave him a brand span new one. No charge whatsoever. Amen. That must be an over $100 battery. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, God's blessing all the while. Amen. True. Yes. I have a lot of things that I could say that God's been doing. But one thing that comes to my mind right off the bat, which happened last night, is that since Christmas, my brother-in-law, or not my brother-in-law, yeah, my brother-in-law, bought me a little flashlight. And I wanted a bigger flashlight for doing things in the dark. If we ever need it when the power goes out, which I have a generator, but, you know, you just want a flashlight anyways. And it's a rechargeable one. It's like a thousand lumens. And it was at Walmart. 
and it was $70, but I didn't buy it until last night. My wife was trying to tell me to buy it last week because if I wanted it for my birthday uh, present, and I didn't want to put it in the cart, and then she was going to buy it online, but she didn't want to buy it. We go to Walmart last night, they discounted it $20. <laughs> it was only $49.99. <clears throat> So praise God for that. And I know that God did that because he knew I wanted that flashlight. And that's Amen. why I didn't buy it last Amen. week. I just didn't feel comfortable buying it yet. I seen the bottle gas man up to Randy's house. And I thought, maybe I better flag him down and top off my bottle gas. Uh, it's been uh, <coughs> 16 months, I think, since it wasn't filled up since I had put anything in it so I told him to fill it up for three hundred dollars he filled that up wow. and I still had seventy percent in <laughs> that would had been given to me and that had been all given to me free yeah I saw the guy stop at your house after he filled my tank so up. I thought thirty gallons or whatever for you know a year and a half yeah I thought thank you God yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and then on my taxes, you know, I know I was never concerned with my taxes because even though I don't have insurance and all that, I to the Lord knows that I already told him that I trust in him and I'm, I don't care about the Obamacare fine and all that. So we went and had our taxes done and Carol said, well, you're going to get such and such back even after paying, you know, the $600 fine and all that. And that's the largest return we've ever had. <laughs> so I was like, Sorry. when my wife told me, I said, that much? I said, that's like twice the amount we've ever gotten. And Amen. I was like, praise the Lord for that, because I just got done uh, thanking the Lord for our taxes are going to go good. And I've told him that previously before that, but I know she was out doing taxes, so I was just thanking him for it. And then she comes back and gave me the report, said I just had to sign the papers. True. The three <laughs> biggest things that we need to watch for right now. Stock market collapse, <clears throat> mark of the beast, New York City being totally destroyed. We're very close to those three, very close. We've had more earthquakes already this year than we did all of last year put together. Mm -hmm. That's right, big ones too. Big <laughs> ones. Yep. So that's all I've got. What do you got anymore? You know, God has God has told us about that, that we'd see more earthquakes. You know, uh, we've already been seeing hurricanes. You know, there Volcanoes. Was that, uh, <laughs> there was just that cruise ship that was caught in that storm. And, yeah. man, thank God they made it out. Uh, see, let me comment on problems. that. You know, the, the, the poor captain's getting a lot of flack. In 1952... We boarded a troop carrier out of California for Korea. We ran into a hurricane out there, and the captain of that ship headed right for the center of that hurricane. <laughs> we saw waves go clear over the top of that ship because that was the safest place. Yep. Once you get in it, yeah, you got to come out the other side, but we were safe because of that. Amen. I never forgot that. That would have been I was walking experience. guard duty way, way up on the very top. I went in and sat down in a little aisle because everything was being thrown off all parts of the ship up there because the waves were coming over. Well, I don't know how much it costs to go on one of them cruises, but I tell you what, I hear more bad things on these cruises. I know. I don't want to go on a cruise. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I went on one once uh, when, when me and my wife got married. I don't know if I'd go again, only if the Lord said it was okay. Yeah. Although I don't, do it, I don't go anywhere without the Lord saying it's okay because you yeah, never know what's going to happen. Pray and make sure God says it's <laughs> right. okay to fly. That's right. It's becoming very dangerous. Yep. He's told us not to go past 200 miles without his permission. That's I right. think he's cut it down, though, to 50 miles. Yeah, that means whether you're going on a bicycle or walking. <laughs> Not the gold. He told us not to go so far we couldn't walk back on the same day. That's yeah, right. So that means I go to my mailbox. <laughs> 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 now, I do stay around town mostly. 
All right. You know, God tries to keep us safe. He tries to warn us, but really it's up to us to decide, do we do what God has told us to do or do we do what we want to do? And sadly, many, many times people do what they want to do. It's been that way all throughout history. That's why Israel's gotten themselves into trouble over and over and over because they continue to do what they want to do instead of doing what God has told them to do what he wants them to do. Yeah. And you see, if you do what God wants you to do, how much easier it can be. Because God has given us his word that um, he's going to take us through these days victoriously, that these things don't have to come nigh our dwelling. In fact, I'm going to tell you a little story. This happened three or four years ago um, to two children. I believe they were 12 and 10 or 14 and 12, right around in that area. And their parents were at work, and I believe this was in Tennessee or Mississippi, somewhere down south um, where they were getting a lot of bad storms. And they stood on their front porch and commanded that that tornado would not um, come. destroy their house, yeah. that it wouldn't come to them. It came to their property line, came up and over the house, and back down on the other side of their Amen. property line. Never touched them. Here's two youth, two children, we could say, that were brave enough to stand upon God's word and God moved upon their behalf. That's now, right. God said, a child shall lead them. So what can we learn from, from children? Well, we need to learn that we need to put all of our trust and all of our confidence upon God and know that he is going to do what he said he's going to do and that we don't have anything to fear we have nothing to worry about because God is going to take us through these times victoriously God is going to watch over us God is going to protect us God is going to feed us and clothe us if need be if we put all of our trust and all of our confidence in him there's nothing in this world that we need to worry about Amen. that's right how Seek old? First. How old is Zane now? <laughs> Eight, seven. seven, seven. And I'll tell you, when God moves on him, some people think, "Oh, that's just him." But if they listen, <laughs> if they would listen to what he's saying, no eight-year-old knows those things. Amen. Most of the adults don't know. Yeah, these they things. don't even know it if you ask the adults. He was the first one to talk about a fireball. That's right. And then God started talking about the fireball. There was, hey, no, 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 fireball. <laughs> you know, there was another prophet that we knew, and we met him when he was about seven or eight years old, and we couldn't, I mean, if you talked to him, you would have thought he was much older than that. We haven't heard from him in many, many, many oh, years. Oh, yes, I don't know ever what happened. You know. <clears throat> but we trust that he's uh, still out there serving God and uh, speaking forth his word <laughs> just like God called him to do. Yes, and if you're out there, give us a call or Amen. come to our chat channel. We'd love to... Know what you're doing. He's yeah. got to be what now? 14? I believe, no, no, no. He's got to be up closer. Uh, I think he was around Christopher's age. Maybe. Oh, could be. Yes, he was. He's got to be about 24 yeah, he's or 25. He's got to be in his 20s now. Lower 20s. I don't know. It's been so many years. Many, many, many years. <laughs> Praise God. All right. I don't know what time we're... <laughs> getting to but we must be getting close to the end yes praise the lord and and by all means if you have questions please write to us that's right or uh, call leave it on the guest book however however you get a hold of us it doesn't matter uh, but we are here to help you we are here to answer your questions oh Stephen, those that's five dollars a name a title Book of Revelation, like I said, I think I got three of them on there. Daniel, I got at least two. If you only want one of each, go ahead. If you want them all, you can probably buy it all for $25 like, <laughs> for what you've asked for. Like we've said, and we'll say it again, you can write us. Any study you want is $5. $5. doesn't, doesn't matter how long Amen. it is. In fact, you can even get Pastor's book that was published 2009 until the end. Um, in an attachment in your email for five dollars. That sold for eight thousand dollars. The last one we heard about. <laughs> that was, $10, that was crazy. Almost. Was it ten thousand almost? It was almost ten thousand. I don't know. It's crazy. That's why I didn't republish it. I wasn't going to let them sell it for all that money, and it was ridiculous. Well, you know what? They're profiting off the gospel, and they're going to be held accountable for it. Yeah, so, it's true. So. 
Hopefully they're not saved yet so that they didn't get that held against them. <laughs> it will lead to their salvation. <laughs> All right. Praise anything God. else? Well, we thank you for joining with us again, and we will see you next time on A Talk with a Prophet. Hey. Amen.